Hey, welcome everybody. So good to see you this morning. My name is Todd Stiles, and I am the youth director here. Uh, that means I have the awesome honor and privilege of leading our youth group, which is called Junkyard. Uh, and today, like Rebecca said, is a special day. It's Walk Sunday. And if you're here for, with us for the first time, and you don't know what that means, I'm going to explain a little bit. Firstly, I'd like, to, like for you to think of it like confirmation that you might find at some other churches. Although the walk here is a little bit different because we don't force any students to go through it. They make that decision on their own. One huge benefit to that is it allows them to take ownership. And so they get a lot more out of it. And the journey is so much better for them. There's a few other aspects that I want to share just so you know what happens during the walk. Really, there's four elements. One, our students study the Bible. They study scripture, specifically the book of John. Next, they go through uh, some assigned homework where they answer tough questions, and then we break it down during six different classes um, when we meet on Sundays. Third, they receive mentorship. They meet uh, six times with a mentor of their choosing. And then lastly, they, they, they get to experience our Passover night, which is super awesome. And all of that goes, uh, goes into just how much they get to experience Jesus and a relationship with him in a new way. But I'm sure you're tired of me babbling a little bit, and you want to get outside to this weather. So I'm going to keep this thing going. We have a cool opportunity. We get to hear from some of our walk students right now. So I'm going to go ahead and call some of them out right now. Come on out, friends. Well, welcome, you guys, and thank you so much for being here this morning. We're all looking forward to hearing the stories that you have for us. But before we jump into that, before we start, can you just share your name, introduce yourself, and what school you attend? I'm Alyssa Croakman, and I go to Northview Middle School. I'm Megan Wolf, and I go to Ankeny Centennial High School. And I'm Isaiah Pine, and I go to Southview Middle School. I'm Paige McGrath. I'm the K-12 ministry assistant here. Thank you guys for introducing yourself. I'm so excited to hear what you guys have to say and for you to get to share with the congregation. As Todd mentioned, you guys all read through the book of John and learned about that and how to apply it to your life. Megan, I know learning from God's word has been impactful for you. Not only reading it, but also trusting God with your life. Would you mind sharing the impact that following Jesus has had on you lately? Yes, of course. I'll start out by sharing about Jesus' sacrifice, which to me means that he believed my life was worth dying for. Since he was willing to die for me, I now have complete trust in him with everything. And I know that he is what is best for me in mind. I believe Jesus wants me to succeed by following his plan. I've learned that letting Jesus lead me and following his word brings me so much comfort and peace. I'm also learning how to share my love with Jesus with my friends, which isn't always easy. I've always wanted my friends to have a relationship with God like I do. Recently, I learned something with my mentor, Wendy, that completely changed my entire mindset. She taught me that God's, words does, God's word doesn't always need to be spread verbally. My relationship with God can be reflected in my actions, which my friends see. But like many teenagers, I have failed a lot. I have been judgy, gossip, lied, and rude to others. But even though I fail at times, through my relationship with God, I am improving myself. I've learned my sins do not make me a bad person, and neither do yours. It is, better, it is how you better yourself as a Christian that matters. During the Passover meal, I heard a quote that stood out to me. It says, Jesus took the cruel torture Barabbas deserved so that Barabbas could be treated like Jesus. This applies to everyone. I've learned no sin is greater than another and that Jesus died so Barabbas and all of us could be treated like him. Thanks for sharing that, Megan. I loved hearing all your reflections and also how Wendy had an impact on your life and how you're able to have an impact on the life of the friends around you and knowing that God's always there when we make mistakes, right? Now, Alyssa, I know that you've been learning to trust Jesus lately. Do you mind sharing a little about that lately? Absolutely. I've always trusted him, but to be honest, I never fully understood why. But during this past year, I began to understand what trusting Jesus really means. To me, it means knowing he has your best interest at heart. He literally died for us. We don't have to be perfect. Jesus himself said that he will forgive us. I have witnessed this firsthand. I was struggling with sin and talked to God, talked go, with God through it, and he helped me realize how much he loves me, and that's why Jesus died for me. Once I repented and asked for forgiveness, my life changed. 
I was happy and a lot less anxious. I now have hope for the future, and that's how I learned that I had to trust him with my life. Alyssa, I like that you, you talked about in the beginning, you said, uh, I've always trusted him, but to be honest, I never knew why. And it sounds like the time that you took to really pray to God helped with that. And you, and you also shared that you were struggling a little bit in sin, but then once you were praying and working through that with God, that you were able to let that go and really see what Jesus did for you and what he continues to do for you. And I love that you shared that. And there is something else that you've shared with me, which I think would be really good for our friends out here to, to hear. Uh, you went through something that was pretty difficult and you struggled with anxiety and depression. Um, would you mind sharing how you found hope and comfort uh, through God during that time? Yes, for the past three years, I have struggled with severe depression and anxiety. During this time, I completely pushed the Lord away, and I was really struggling to find a reason to stay alive. However, last summer, I started reading my Bible more and talking to God. Then a friend of mine, Sarah J., mentioned Junkyard to me, so I decided to try it out. After that, I began attending Junkyard every Wednesday, and I loved it. I honestly think that's what helped me the most. I was able to learn about God and what Jesus did for me. I started to finally understand that I actually don't deserve to be here, but Jesus died so I could be here. One verse I kept going back to was Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. This verse helped me understand that he is helping me through my struggles even when I don't notice it. Thank you for sharing, Alyssa, and, and for your transparency and being honest. I mean, you're not just being honest in front of just us Five, you're being honest in front of all of these people, and that takes a lot of boldness and courage. So I just want to just say thank you for that, because that's not something easy to go through. But I love that you said you went to God. And not only that, you didn't just go to prayer and go to Him. You put yourself in a setting that was around other believers, other people who could lift you up. And that's really powerful. And so I love that you made that point, because we do rely on those around us to lift us up. And God has given people to us as a gift uh, for that reason to hold us accountable, to love on us, and to encourage us. Now, Isaiah, I'm coming to you. I know you've been through some ups and downs over the past year. Would you mind sharing a little of your story and how God's word gave you clarity and peace? Yeah, absolutely. So last year, I lost my great-grandmother, and she meant everything to me and cared so much about me. After we lost her, I began studying the Bible more, and it helped me get through her passing. The, help, the Bible helped me understand how to handle my feelings and emotions. One piece of scripture I kept holding on to during this time was John three sixteen through 17, which says, For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believed in him will not perish but have eternal life. And for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. These verses tell us that if we believe in Jesus, we will have eternal life. My great grandma was very faithful in her relationship with Jesus, so it was comforting to read these verses and knowing she was in heaven with him. And I'd also like to share one more aspect about my story, and that is the Ridge has been a great place for me to learn God's word. This church has been a great space for me to learn biblical understanding and to build great relationships. Some people who have been a great influence on my faith journey are Carter Bisgard, Jeff Austin, Neil Erich, Graham Shart, Drew Selner, Nancy Eldred, Elder, and you, Todd. All of these people have demonstrated what it looks like to truly love Jesus and how to follow him. Thanks for sharing that, Isaiah. It's so encouraging how you just taught all of us that we can turn to Scripture to help us through times for comfort and direction. I appreciate how you shared that the Bible gave you a different perspective and that you were able to talk to God about your emotions and just let him speak over that. You didn't, let, no, you didn't think that God was just going to take those emotions away, but you talked to God with it, and he gave you a heavenly perspective. So I love that. I also loved how you hit on all the relationships that you have with different mentors. And I know many of those people are sitting out here today. And there are also some sitting out there that are going to be that person for someone someday if you just take the step and try Junkyard out someday. So one more question for you guys. And this is to you, Megan. I know that you've been learning about forgiveness in the Bible, and the Bible teaches a lot about forgiveness. Would you mind sharing a bit of how you've, how you've turned to Jesus and learned forgiveness through him? I would love to. To me, Jesus has taught me to forgive by being the example of how I should act. Jesus often forgave people, so I should forgive as well, even if I don't want to. A verse I lean on is Matthew 6:14, which says, 
For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Whenever I read this verse, I am reminded of the, the importance of forgiveness in my own life. If Jesus forgives me, who am I to withhold forgiveness from others? Jesus has impacted my life so much. There was a time when I was in a difficult situation with some friends, and they didn't really deserve forgive, forgiveness. But I was willing to forgive them because I know that is what Jesus wants me to do. I think everyone needs forgiveness because they can benefit from a strong relationship with Jesus. I have a relationship with Jesus that many others do not have at this stage in their lives. This relationship is all I need. I know my worth and I don't let the opinions of others bring me down because I know what Jesus really thinks of me. I love that, Megan. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I know there's you know, some of us in the, in, in the congregation this morning who resonate with that or that resonates with, with you this morning, forgiveness is hard. It is. People hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. That's what happens all the time. And it's not always easy to extend forgiveness or to ask for it. Um, and so if you're sitting in here this morning, I hope you find just some encouragement. Uh, we have some young people up here talking about this is something they are learning and practicing um, even though it's not easy, they're not saying it's easy because it's definitely not, but it's something they are still trying, which is super cool, Megan, that you just shared that with us. And uh, Alyssa, Megan, Isaiah, thank you for starting us off and for sharing these personal stories with us. Um, I'm encouraged, I'm challenged, and I, I'm sure there's some more people out there that are also encouraged and challenged in their faith. Um, so before we invite our next group up, I'd like to just draw your attention to this video real quick. <laughs> 